By the time of the invasion, we knew exactly where we were supposed to go and what we had to do, said Wrencher. Our job was to detect and disarm all the different types of mines that the Germans had in the water and on the landing beaches. They had around 20 different types. There were half a dozen mines just for personnel, as well as tank mines and water mines. Some were concrete with dynamite inside. Some came up out of the ground six feet when you set them off and exploded right in your face. Wrencher's three-man squad consisted of himself, Otis Ham of Biloxi, Mississippi, and Dan Schellenberg of Youngstown, Ohio. Ham was the veteran, said Wrencher. He'd made all three previous invasions. He knew how to detect and disarm everything. Schellenberg and I were only 18 when we began training, and he made us as professional as he was. Ham was a tough and demanding taskmaster. He knew that his survival depended on training the two younger men to do their jobs to perfection. He hounded them, pushed them, and beat them into becoming a well-honed team. As a veteran of the three previous beach assaults, Ham had no delusions about the deadliness of their mission. There was little room for error. He figured, based on his experience, that he would be the one of the three of us who would not be killed and that Schellenberg and I would be killed, remembered Wrencher. Their task required good ears, steady hands, and more than a little luck. For each mine, we had to find the teeny tiny detonator, recalled Wrencher. We worked as a team. One of us had the mine detector, a disc about one foot across with a handle, and a meter with a dial on it. There were earphonies that would hum, and the dial would tell you when it had detected metal. We had to detect each mine. We had to disarm them, and often the minas themselves were booby-trapped. General Field Marshal Erwin Rommel had ordered 50 million mines for the beaches. At the time of the invasion, he had over 20 million of them installed. The best day for attack would have been June 5th, but the weather was too rough. June 5 and 6 had the lowest tide for the next six months. The 5th was ideal, and the 6th was not quite as good, but General Dwight D. Eisenhower, Supreme Allied Commander, decided to go for it on the 6th. We were loaded onto 10 LCT landing craft tank ships the night of June 5, and then we waited for the sea to calm. We left about 6 p.m., Hauer was at 0600, and the 531st had to land at 0500 to clear the beaches. The waves were about 5 feet high, and we got very seasick. In a way, being seasick helped us because we couldn't stand to stay on the landing craft any longer. About a half mile off the beach, they loaded us into 30-man landing craft for the final approach. Utah Beach was eerily quiet. I had 60 pounds of explosives in my pack, both TNT and composition explosives, said Wrencher. The good thing about the TNT was that a bullet could pass right through it and it wouldn't blow up. You had to have a blasting cap to detonate it, but I also had to carry those. If a bullet hit one of the blasting caps, it would have detonated that 60 pounds of TNT and I would have been completely vaporized.